Hey guys, it's Misty. Uh, this Evernote tutorial is turning out to be a little bit more uh, time consuming than I thought it was going to be. So I decided to do it in two parts because there's several different ways you can use Evernote. This video, I'm gonna focus on how to use the web clipper and I'm gonna show you how to get this if you're using Chrome. I'm using a Mac, I don't know how to do this on a PC. So I'm just gonna show you how I do it on my Mac. I couldn't get the um, audio to work on my screen recording here, so bear with me. I'm going to try to, um, you know, I'm going to try to do this voiceover the best I can. All right, in order to get Web Clipper, you're going to click on this little icon up here that says Apps in the top left. And then from here, you're just going to click on Web Store. This part's really easy too. Make sure it's on Extensions here. And then just type in Evernote. And you can type in Ever Evernote Web Clipper if you want, but it should be the first one to pop up. And then you just click on Add to Chrome. I already have it, so it doesn't have the Add to Chrome button there, but that's all you do. Click on that and it'll add this little icon right up here. All right, so let me show you how to use it now. Uh, so I have a stamp set here that I recently received. And first I need to find an image. So I'm going to open Chrome and I'm going to type the name of the stamp set. So this is Concord and Ninth Monster Love. And I'll go a little bit more into this in my next video, but uh, you're going to click on images. And I, uh, I always try to choose images that are 500 by 500 and above, or 500 is the minimum that I like to save. I only have the stamp set for this, but if I had both the stamp set and the die, I would look for an image that either had both images in the picture or I would just save two pictures. So I just have the stamp set for this. So I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna click on our new little Evernote uh, icon there. And then here's where I'm gonna make all the changes. I like everything to be capitalized. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those changes really quick. And you don't have to be this particular about it. This is just one of those things that would drive me nuts. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make the changes now. And if you didn't want to make them now or you forgot to, you know, you can always do it once it's saved too. It's really easy. This app is, I mean, they just make it really easy to use once you know how to use it. So hopefully these videos will help you. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of go down the list here. There's several different ways you can save it. Um, you can save the whole page. You can save, um, you know, you can bookmark it. There's, there's different ways you can save it. I like to do a screenshot because I want just the image. So what you do is you're gonna, wherever you put your cursor, and as soon as you click, you're gonna drag it. And then when you let go, that's everything that it's gonna copy. I'm going to get just the image here and then let go and there's my image. So there's a few different things you can do here. I'll just kind of hover over them and see what they say. I can highlight things if you wanted to highlight them. Uh, there's shapes. Let's see if I can get the different shapes to show up here. It's like this is, it has an arrow, but yeah, there's other shapes here you can use. Uh, what is this one? Marker, I think this was. Yes, marker. The crop tool, which I'm actually going to use because I don't want that strip of black there. So I'm just going to crop it and then click apply. And then you can um, either zoom in or zoom out. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And you can't do it too much because then it'll start getting uh, really grainy. But stamps, you can use images and they have a couple here you can add on to the image I don't know why you'd want to you can add text uh, anyway so yeah there's a couple things a couple other things you can you can do here it's already in the stamps folder I don't know why it says hero arts but here's where you're gonna add any of the tags that you want to add I like to be specific on these so I'll, I'll add anything that I can think of. I'm going to add Concord and Ninth with both the words spelt out and the and sign. I'm going to add the name of the stamp set. 
Um, and then just anything I can think of. Monsters, hearts. And in addition to listing all the images, I also type out all the sentiments because you can pull up all your tags. So if you're looking for a specific sentiment or just a specific word, like the word you or love, uh, you can type that in and it'll show you all the stamp sets that have that word um, either in a sentiment or just separately. It shows it all. So I, I, I like to be as detailed as I can just because I have a horrible memory. So it just helps me to put them all in while I'm adding it. And okay, so this one says hello there, comma friend, but you can't add the comma because the comma is just like hitting the return button. So don't add the comma. Otherwise you'd have two separate tags. It would be hello there and then friend would be separate. All right, after I add all those, you can add remarks here. So this is where I would type if I had the coordinating die or what it coordinates with. You can do it either way, coordinates with such and such stamp set or such and such die or have the matching die however you want to word it that'll you know you could just look at it and know that you have the matching die so um the ones that i have matching dies on the title the name after the name of the stamp set i add a little asterisk um which i'll talk a little bit more about that in the next video but i even started doing both i'll add the asterisk and the title and then i'll add um, in the body that it coordinates with such and sh such stamp set or die, whatever I'm entering. And then you just click save. And then once you do that, it'll give you the option to view it in Evernote. Um, I don't do this just because it'll pull up the um, Evernote, the website that you log into. And I don't use that one. I use the Evernote app because I just know that one better. It looks different. Um, for some reason, when I pull it up on the website here, none of the images show up next to uh, the title. And I've seen in other people's videos where the image will show up next to the title. And I'm a visual person, I, person, I need to be able to see it. So I just don't really use this. Um, I don't use it very often logging onto the website like this, but you can. Hopefully your images will show up there, but you know, you don't even have to do this. This is, you know, you're, you're, this would just be kind of checking yourself to make sure you, you have everything in here. And it does. It has a title, the image. Here's where all the tags that you added are down here at the bottom. But if I did want to view it for some reason, then I would just click on the app down here. I would go into my stamps, make sure that it syncs, which only takes a second and then search for it. So you can either search in a specific folder or you can search all of them. I'm gonna go ahead and search in my stamps folder since it's a stamp that I'm looking for. I'll type in monster love and there it is. Double click on it and there's everything we added. There's all the tags that I added got my title the way I want it, got my image, which you can make smaller. You just can't make it any bigger than the size that you saved it. And they make it really easy to add tags. If you forgot a tag, you just uh, click up there and start typing. If you, let's say, what else can you do? Um, if you want to delete a tag, you just click once, it highlights it, and then you just click delete. If you want to edit a tag, you just double click on it. So the saved it in the stamps folder, but if for some reason when you saved it on the web, it had the wrong folder there, uh, you can always change it. You just click on that folder there on the left, and then you click whichever folder you want to move it to, and you click on move, and that's it. So whatever it says up in the left corner there where it says set stamps, that's the folder that you're in. See, they make it really easy to change things, move things, edit things. And that's it pretty much. So again, here, this is the folder you're in. This is how many entries you have in this particular folder. Uh, this is why I put the name of the company first. That way all of my Altenew stamp sets are together. 
you know, all my Avery L stamp sets are together, which is very helpful when you're on design teams and you have to use a specific uh, company. But, you know, I mean, it's however you want to do it. If you want to list the name of the stamp first and then have things, you know, in alphabetical order, you can do that. It's however you want to save it, whatever's going to work best for you. But yeah, that's pretty much how you use the, the web clipper to add stamps and dies to your inventory. Now, if I had purchased the the matching die, I would just come over and look for an image of um, either the stamp set and the die together, which is what I've been doing um, lately, or like this one, there isn't one with both of them together. So I would just take this picture here of the, the die set and do the same exact thing that we just did. All right, so back in the Evernote app, um, I store my dies two different ways. I have a separate folder for standalone dies, and then I have a separate folder for the coordinating dies. Now the standalone dies could also include the coordinating dies if it could be used without the stamp set, and in which case I would save it in both folders. I would save it in the standalone dies folder, and I would save it in the die set folder, which is the coordinating dies. I should change the name of that to coordinating dies. But yeah, this folder is for all, all the coordinating die sets are in here. And I did this because sometimes I just like to browse through my standalone dies and, um, you know, choose what I want to use that way. And I don't necessarily want to look through all of these that can only be used with particular stamp sets. And I also save my embossing folders this way. The ones that I could um, remember the names of or I could find online. When I first started getting embossing folders, I didn't save the packaging, so I had a hard time finding the names of some of them. But for the most part, I think I did pretty good. I was able to find images. I need to go through, I don't know why I stored these with the name of the folder first and then the name of the company. One of these days I'll go through and change that, but um, I store my stencils this way. I have a separate folder for stencils. And I mean, you can store anything. I started to store ink, my ink pads this way, but I haven't gone back to that. I haven't had time, but I store, I do my Copic um, card breakdowns. If I want to know what I used on a particular card, um, I'll add a picture of the card. I, I will list you know, what everything I use, I list all the distress inks that I used for the background. I'll list all the Copic markers that I used to color the images. I even listed which uh, embossing powder I used for this beautiful tree. And I listed which uh, glitter I used on the snowman's hat. It has really pretty glitter on it. So again, this could be as detailed as you want it to be. You know, I listed what paper I used. Uh, really important to list which stamp sets you used because I've tried to go back and f make a card over again and I couldn't remember which stamp set or who the maker was of the sentiment that I used on that card. So that was a big hassle going through all my stamps. But yeah, so I started listing all the stamp sets that I use on the card. And then I list here, uh, you know, to see blog and YouTube video for more details. So it just lets me know that I did a blog post about this card and that I also did a YouTube video if I want to go back and watch it. But you can add tags here. See, I'm telling you, this is just a really handy, handy app to have. And I have a separate folder for card uh, breakdown only because I, I created the Copic color breakdown folder first and then I realized it doesn't just have to be Copic coloring I can you know I can list if I use colored pencils or whatever I'm using um, you know I, I'll add it in there too so one of these days I'll combine the two in my spare time so in my next video, I'm going to show you how, if you want to skip that web clipper, I'm going to show you how to just copy and paste it right into the Evernote app. That's what I did for many moons until I found this web clipper 
Um, so I'm more familiar with that way. But if you guys have any questions, let me know, please. If I need to go into more details, I will. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.